So, um, kick back for about 10, 15 minutes or so. We're going to go over this whole uh, Sergey Limping Yetz, IBF champion versus Mikey Garcia because he is the champion and he should be the A-side, but he's not. February the 10th, 2017 is going to be in the Alamo Dome on Showtime. We're going to talk about it all. We're going to talk about how much Mikey Garcia is allegedly supposed to be making. Sergey Limping Yetz, what this fight means. And honestly, it, the fight has grown on me. I'm not going to lie. And I'm going to tell you why. Please subscribe. It's 9.49 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, January the 2nd, 2018. I'm T-Street Controversy. This is T-Street Controversy Live. Please subscribe. Came back. I wanted to move fast. I wanted to take on big challenges, take on world title fights. Hands on take Janine! Goes down! So far, we're on track. Historically, what separates legendary fighters from very good fighters is the ones who travel across weight classes. And that's what Mikey is doing. Okay, first, let's stop that right there. They're not. Let's let's uh, let me pull this up over here first. They are counting this fight against Sergey Limping yet as his basically his 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 official full fight at 140 pounds, even though he fought um even though he fought um Adrian Broner at 140 in his last fight. Now, let's go look at uh, Mikey Garcia real quick. 37 and old with 30 KOs. 30 years old. You know, as you know, he's the younger brother of uh, trainer Robert Garcia. Let's go look at the resume. He's fighting Sergey Lampinets February the 10th. He fought Adrian Broner in July. He fought the Jean Zakla Tekanen when he won the WBC 135-pound um, title. And yes, he's still 135-pound WBC champion. Then this was his comeback fight. You know, um, in July of last year, we fought a lawyer, um, a Leo Royals, um, Roja. And before that, he fought at 130 pounds. So basically, he jumped up, you know, two weight division. It was his comeback fight. So basically, they was trying to um, figure out what, you know, like how comfortable he was going to be, comfortable he was going to be making 140 pounds. And also, you know, to test out like, well, let's see, can you go, can you fight at 135 if you wanted to? In his next fight, he clearly shown that. Now, if you don't know, he was involved in this big legal battle with um, top ranked boxing where basically he had like this indefinite contract or so. So now there's this narrative going around that he can't fight Lomachenko because Bob Aaron will stop it or will try to stop it. But here's the thing. If Mikey Garcia, if he wins against Sergey Limpinets, if Mikey Garcia will truly, you know, um, because he's saying that he can still go down to 135. He's saying that he'll still, you know, he still has um, options to fight Jorge Linares and all that. We're going to talk about all that later on. But if he truly wants to fight Lomachenko at 135 pounds, and Lomachenko is already talking about moving to 135 pounds, I'm guessing that maybe he'll fight... Um, um ray beltran for that vacant 135 pound title that um terry flanagan has moved up and dropped so if he wants to fight a facile lomachenko here's the issue it would have to be on espn because lomachenko belonged to espn but mikey garcia even though he says he's a free agent he's really 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 not if you really look at it because he's alleged to be making about what is it is it three? It's at least three million dollars, you know, for this Sergey Limpinets fight. And one of the reasons he's supposed to be making so much is to keep him away from, you know, HBO because he got a really good offer to fight Miguel Cotto and to fight Jorge Linares and somebody else. I don't know who or forgot who, whatever the case may be. So he was given this payday or allegedly being given this big payday to fight Sergey Limpinets. It's like, listen, you stay with us over here at Showtime, PBC. We're going to take care of you, right? But he says he's a free agent. But if he's a free agent, then he should be able to fight on any network, right? So it looks like to me that he's playing, you know, a really good game here because if he keeps doing these fight by fight contracts, who is PBC Showtime going to come up? um um with for him next to fight also later on in this video we're going to look at the ibf rankings because one thing if you don't know the ibf is very very strict of the four sanctioning bodies between the wbc wba wbo if you're ibf champion you have to fight your mandatories or you will strip you will be stripped now now understand that this belt 
formerly belonged, just like all the other three belts now left in the division. Well, four, well, three of the other, uh, out of all the four belts now, were left by Terrence Crawford. Terrence Crawford moved up to 147. He beat Julius Ndongu to become the last undisputed, you know, the first undisputed champion since uh, Jermaine Taylor beneath, defeated Bernard Hopkins. What was that, uh, in 2005? So a lot of people are giving Mikey Garcia shit. It's like, okay, well, now you move to 140. You know, when basically the WBC would have made him um, Terrence Crawford's mandatory, but Terrence Crawford already had plans to move to 147 anyway, so let's leave him out of it. You know, the, the biggest storyline for Mikey Garcia now is if he beats Sergey Lempiens, and we're going to talk about that, is, is will he fight Lomachenko and what's in the way of that? Now, him versus Lomachenko is a very, 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 very big fight. It's a shame, you know, that Lomachenko is not getting the credit that he deserves for just completely schooling and making um, Guillermo Rigondeaux quit because they're like he's a smaller fighter. But now if Lomachenko moves up to fight Mikey Garcia, he'll be the smaller fighter because Mikey Garcia is now fighting at 140, was even willing to go to 154, and I've seen him in person. He's a big dude. He can fight at 147, you know? So, you know, it, 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 if the fight was to happen, truth be told, if he's truly a free agent, if he's truly, truly, truly a free agent, then make the phone phone call to Bob Barham. You're a free agent. Say, Bob Barham, all right, listen, all our differences aside, don't try to sign me up to no contracts or nothing. Let's do this one fight. I'll come over to ESPN, make it big. I want to be great. But it's it's a lot more complex than that because in the narrative of the media these days, especially if you come to YouTube to get media, you have a lot of media who, because they don't like Lomachenko, they spin this narrative that Lomachenko's the bad guy and all this, when it's like that's not the case. So let's talk about Sergey Lempinets. Now, here's the thing. He doesn't have that many fights, and over the last um, several days, the holidays, I watched a good portion of these fights. You can watch these fights on the PBC channel, uh, uh, YouTube channel. Um, they're on the Showtime channel. Dude's been getting Bounce TV. Dude's been getting a lot of airtime. Now, here's the thing. Right now, it's not just because he's from Kazakhstan that I'm saying this, you know, but he fights like Golovkin a little bit, but not as skilled. Now, even though he wins this fight, he hasn't been in, in any danger to lose in any of these fights, but they haven't been, you know, like easy on him, basically, you know. They haven't been easy on him. He just doesn't. I'm, 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 I'm trying. He's very confident. When you go look at his social media, I'll pull it up for you real quick. When you go look at. You know, the fact that he wanted to fight Terrence Crawford. And even, I ain't going to lie, he was on some bullshit when he was trying to stop Crawford versus Ndongu. He tried, he literally, he didn't want it to happen because he's like, how are y'all stepping over me, you know? But now Terrence Crawford is gone. You know, now Terrence Crawford is gone from the division. He's still calling him out. But I'm going to pull up his, um... Hold on. Let me pull up a social media. You know, he's been he's talking to confidence, you know, talk. Also, we're going to listen to something um, that Richard Schaefer has to, had to say that I feel is very, very important. Now, look, he's talking gangster shit. Now, in my opinion, it's not him running his social media. Somebody in my opinion, it may be him. In my opinion, um, by the way, it's at uh, Union Samurai. That's his um, this is Twitter handle. You know, 2018, here we go to strive to be the best. Now, here's what he tried. I don't get people caught. Oh, no, this was about him saying he uh, sparked Terrence Crawford. Where is it at? Where is it at? Funny, you fight bums, they say you cherry picking. You fight real champs, they say you ain't ready. Remains to be seen. For the last 10 years, they were saying I ain't ready. You know, so as I said, he comes across and he seems, you know, very, very confident. And the selling point of this fight, I noticed, um, judging from um, a world champion like Sergey Lipinets is more exciting to me than just somebody that's going to be an easy title defense. He's going to be very hungry, very motivated. He knows the victory over me, obviously, launches his career to the very, very top. That makes for an interesting fight. We had you see how huge a he great is? year in 2017. But this, that wasn't what I want you. I want you to listen to this, and we're going to take a little bit of a break. It's only two minutes long. You know, listen to this, and we're going to talk about this, and we're going to see if this is relevant or not, because I feel this is a good fight for Mikey Garcia, and I feel that 
either Mikey Garcia or his team don't really feel comfortable at 140 just yet. Even though they fought Broner, Broner didn't really put up much of a fight. Broner didn't even really throw any hard shots to make Mikey Garcia feel like, okay, you really don't belong here. So I feel that they're looking at this Sergey Limpinich with this, with this, with this great amateur background, you know, and a full-fledged 140 pound fighter. They feel that he's going to be, you know, put it this way. I'm starting to really, really, really understand why they're making this fight. It's like a test for Mikey Garcia, you know? But watch this. I'll be right back. Yeah, what could you tell us about this upcoming event? I mean, why the fans should tune in to see uh, Lipinets and Garcia? Well, uh, you have uh, two of the most exciting fighters in the sport. Uh, two guys uh, undefeated, two world champions, uh, two guys who have a combined record of 50 and 0 with 40 knockouts. Guys who can punch, guys who can box, uh, guys who only know one thing, that is to win. And now they're going to fight each other. So uh, it doesn't get much bigger than that. Uh, Sergey Lipin is certainly the biggest puncher in the 140-pound weight class. And as I said at the press conference, it seems that Mikey Garcia always uh, seeks out these big punchers, these big challenges, and that's what it is. You know, there's a reason why so far in the entire history of the sport of boxing, there have only been two guys who moved up from the featherweight division and win four consecutive uh, uh, world titles. Imagine only two. And those two are Juan Manuel Marquez and Manny Pacquiao. So why are they only two? Well, because it is difficult. It's difficult for a 126 pounder to go up to 130 to 135 and then 140 and to become a champion in each one of those weight classes. That is why you want to tune in. That is why you want to see it because they're exciting. They're champions, and both only know one thing, which is to win, and it's historic. And on the coming events, who do we got coming in? Oh, you have uh, Rancis Bartolemi against uh, Kirill. Uh, a rematch, uh, rematch of uh, one of the great fights of this year. Uh, disputed decision somewhat, people think. Uh, all guys went down it's, uh, and came up. Uh, uh, Rancis Bartolemi uh, uh, got the decision. Uh, but it was a very close fight, and now they're going to do it again, and it's for the WBA 140-pound uh, world title. So you have two world title fights on the card. Okay. That was from um. That was from um, uh, Rob Suarez, our head of uh, Fight View 360 over in uh, LA. So that is true, though. Mikey Garcia is coming from 126 pounds. You know, doesn't that mean something? You know. Now, what's what's been overshadowing this fight is the the bigger names that that's that he's been linked to, you know. For example, it just came out that um he didn't choose the Omar Figueroa fight and fears that Omar Figueroa wouldn't make 140 pounds. He didn't take the Cotto fight because the Cotto fight they tried them. Now here's the facts: they tried to sign him to a multi-fight deal for the Cotto fight, which I don't understand why people are pissed off at Golden Boy. That's what any promoter's supposed to do, you know. But um, then, um, Eric Gomez, then, um, the VP of Golden Boy Promotions, then reached back out to Mikey Garcia and said, okay, listen, if you want to fight Cotto or Linares, then we won't try to sign you, you know, just come over to HBO. You know what I'm saying? You will give you just the one fight. <coughs> and, um, hence the reason why Showtime had to double down and be like, oh, shit. Well, we got to give Mikey some extra money to try not to jump ship because we already invested so much in it. Another reason why they're saying that the fight's taking place down in um, Texas in the Alamo Dome is they really need a strong, you know, strong ticket sales. They really need this fight to sell in order to make up for the purse of uh, Mikey Garcia. And also, that's why the undercard, excuse me. <coughs> Let me get a cough drop. Also, yeah, I'm going to get some cough drops. I'm going to get some cough drops. Also, they're saying that's why um, the undercard against, um, you know, um, Rancis Barthelemy and uh, Kuro Relock is is happening because that's a fight where it don't really um, involve too much money, if that makes sense, you know? So, 
what if Sergey Limpinets does beat Mikey Garcia? Now, like I said, all his fights, even though he's only been in 13 of them, have been, you know, tough fights. He's been in, out of those 13 fights, you know, out of six that I can remember, and I was at, you know, the one when he won the IBF title against um, um, uh, Kondo. Um, also, we have an interview coming from um, Sergey Limpinets that I'm going to upload later on today of him talking about the fight. Um, and um, that Snow Queen from L.A. chick is translating. So... Like I said, like he, you know, he, he just doesn't seem that good, you know, or, or not on the level of Mikey Garcia, but yet he's a naturally bigger fighter. He should be, you know, naturally stronger. You know, Mikey Garcia couldn't hurt Broner, you know, even though Broner was on his bike, you know, so it's, it's, it's complex. And if this dude is talking all this stuff about how great he is and everything, you know, um, me and Sergey Lempinets that he's been a whoever running his Twitter, if it is him, mm, you know, about how he's been waiting for this since he was a boy and all kind of stuff like that. And, you know, with this amateur background that he has, he should have seen many Mikey Garcias, you know. But can he win? I don't know. I'm more interested in a fight than I ever was. You know, but however, like I said, the fight is overshadowed by the big names that that Mikey Garcia was linked to. And now his name is heavily linked to um, his name is heavily linked to. To all Vasil Lomachenko. Now, who is the A side, Vasil Lomachenko or Mikey Garcia? See, that's the thing, man. You know, that's the thing. I'm T Street Controversy. This is T Street Controversy Live. I cover every single major fight live. Please subscribe.